Hi there, Matt Filio in the studio, um, working on a new portrait. Uh, this is a five by seven uh, acrylic on hardboard uh, portrait of a dog. And so I don't do a lot of pet portraits, but from time to time I get some commissions and this happens to be one of them. And I'd like to invite you into my studio today just to watch over my shoulder as I paint and uh, show you some techniques that I use in the painting process. Um, the glazing technique in particular, uh, some of the brushwork and uh, how I mix colors in my palette. And I'm gonna be painting this in a realistic style uh, using a photograph as a reference. And I have everything uh, with the sketch done right now up to a few initial layers. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanna show that to you right now and let's hop over to the other camera. And so this is what I have so far. Uh, again, like I said, it's a five by seven. And I have this particular dog right here. Um, and he's looking at the camera with a nice pleasing pose and uh, cropped in a little bit on the photo uh, just to get some more contrast. And what I did is I sketched this off using the grid technique just to make sure the proportions were accurate. Uh, even though I've done some freehand sketching before, uh, the grid just enables you to do it a little faster. And that's how I teach my students, by the way, is with the grid method. Um, it forces you to use some of your right-brained proportional skills, um, but it really does a lot of the guesswork for you. And so I find it to be very, very helpful um, for students that want to get an accurate foundation for their portrait, um, but they don't want to you know have to struggle with um, freehanding and figuring out all the proportions with, which is pretty challenging and then the other alternative would be to use um, a projector and that takes up almost all the guesswork out of your portrait making uh, so it's very good to have some sort of a guideline which forces you to use your right brain skills without completely um, you know doing all the work for you so this is what I have. And what I did is I, I actually painted over this, um, sealed it in with a mixture of matte medium and gesso. Uh, I'd say about 90% matte medium to maybe 10% gesso. And just sealed in the whole sketch, which I did with colored pencil. Uh, the grid was done with a very light colored pencil, uh, maybe about 10% in darkness. And then the rest I did with a 90% dark uh, Prismacolor. So this would have been what I used for the grit. And this would have been what I used for the actual uh, pencil drawing, colored pencil drawing. And that allows then um, the drawing to stand out from the grid. And it's very, very easy to erase, by the way, on a canvas. If you use a uh, colored pencil, you'll find it erases very, very smoothly on a canvas that's prepared with either matte medium or gesso, something with a flat finish or a mixture of the two. And so after I sketched everything in um, and sealed it in with the clear medium mixed with a little bit of gesso, which just mutes the, the sketch a little bit tones it down and prepares it for the painting. Um, then after that, I went over with some white paint. And because some of the colored pencil lifted and mixed with the, the clear medium to some degree, kind of made everything a grayish tone, I went back in with some white paint and just painted the highlights very quickly of what I see in the photograph. And in doing that, I've already gone a great way in establishing uh, three different values. So I have the kind of neutral tone that was created by that mixture of the colored pencil and the clear medium. And then I have um, the very dark areas where the colored pencil still stayed and didn't lift up and, you know, stayed within the texture, even though there's not much texture here in this hardboard. But um, it just, it stayed there, didn't move. And then I have the white of the white paint that I put on top. So three different values. And what that does is it gives me an excellent foundation uh, to work into. So I, I haven't actually even really started the painting process. 
And already this looks like a nice sketch of the dog. So everything else on top of this, I just kind of consider it a bonus um, because I already have most of the uh, proportional and value work done. And this didn't take that long. This may be hour, hour and a half or so. Um, but what I want to do is get into the actual painting process and show you that right now. So if you can see my palette, or at least portions of the palette, um, what I'd like to do is take a nice flat brush, you know, about a half inch in width, get some fresh medium on the palette. And by the way, another thing I did do just to obscure the grid lines a little more is I used a neutral tone uh, for the background, just kind of mix that white with a little bit of black, just to um, just kind of uh, paint over the grid lines and make them less visible. Because uh, obviously we don't want that in the final painting. So, so what I'm going to do is mix a kind of a sepia tone to emulate the color of the uh, carpeting. And I'll take a little bit of raw umber dark. It's one of my favorite colors. Just put a little corner on my brush. Mix it into this portion of clear medium. And I'm just going to make a glaze, which is a mixture of paint with a lot of clear acrylic medium, which in this case is matte medium. And that dries to a flat finish. And it's very fluid. Not only does it give you the ability to create translucent glazes, which increase depth, luminosity, um, but it also makes your paint a lot easier to work with. It makes it more fluid and uh, extends basically the life or the length of your working time with the paint. Not, not like a, a retardant medium, but um, you know, over time your paints tend to get a little thick and they dry on the palette and it just makes them easier to work with. So I'll just put this slight sepia tone on there. And it will get kind of faint to begin with, but we'll get some more glazes on as we go along. Just want to slowly shift the color in the other direction so that this is in fact color and not black and white, even though the dog is kind of a well, a white dog, there's not a lot of color to him. There are some certain areas of color on him that I need to address, mostly in his ears and then around his snout. And there's just a slight bit of a blue tone on his uh, shirt, whatever that is he's wearing. So with that, I'll take a little bit of ultramarine blue, some clear medium, I'll kind of get a, another area of medium to work into right here and I just mix it together. Uh, if I have a little, here's a little phthalo blue, now that's a little more of an aqua marine looking blue. And uh, I'll need to rinse the brush off. That's very, very strong. I'll just take some of that as well and mix that in to the two. Ultramarine blue and phthalo blue together. And we'll just go right on top. Now it's very faint to begin with. Just enough to slightly tone it. Then we'll be working a little bit darker as we go along. Now we'll let those areas dry. And then what I'm going to do is start toning into the dog's face a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, burnt sienna, that nice reddish brown kind of color, nice brick color and mix this a little bit of white into it so that that white will cover up some of the sketch lines. And we'll just start going right on top of that. Really tone this down. 
some other colors going on in there. There we go. Just spread it over with very light, light strokes. I'm just touching the surface. That's all I want to do for right now. Add a little bit of that color just right around the eyes. Just a little bit. Okay, and now what we want to do is darken some of the darker values. And so I want to go in and I want to um, get these dark areas in the painting that, that I see in the photo. Um, the dark values of his eyes, his nose, the collar, um, all of that should be translated into the actual painting. So for that, I'm taking some raw or dark little ultramarine blue and some white and making kind of a darkish gray And it makes kind of a richer black than what you could actually mix yourself. Now it's not as dark as I could get, but I want to just get one layer on there initially. We'll have to get pretty close to see what's going on in, in the photo and translate that faithfully onto the canvas. And in this case, hardboard. Using a very small size two brush. This is just a five by seven, by the way, so it's pretty little. But it'll make a nice gift. This is something that the uh, client is gonna be giving to her husband as a Father's Day gift. And so that's yeah, nice to be part of meaningful things like this. Just darken in the nose. And uh, let's get in that collar as well. I'll add a little bit of white because it should, should be just a little lighter. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. And we'll just darken this right in. Now we have some good contrast set up. And I also want to work into the area underneath the shadow area. That actually is quite dark. We'll use more of a sepia tone for that. Maybe a little larger brush since the area is quite a bit bigger. Let's mix it right into here. Nice sepia tone with some white to cover the sketch lines.
and we don't want it to be too warm in value. It shouldn't be warmer than what the lighter portion is. I'm adding a little bit of uh, black to that, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue. I can check the color against the photo, see if I'm on the right track. Also, when you add white, it does tend to cool your colors down. So that's something to keep in mind. And this round brush allows me to really cut around the features of the dog very well. So basically, I just want to get rid of some of those sketch lines and add some substance to this area. Use my finger to blend it just a little bit. And then I can also blend it by adding clear medium to the edge of my glaze and just kind of soften it a little bit, which will work fine for this layer. All we want to do is just get a little separation between the background and the dog. Maybe suggest a little texture of the carpeting. Whatever we need to do. All right. And we'll let that dry. Take a little more of a sepia tone brown here and then we'll work around the eyes just a bit. There's some shading going on there that I want to transfer over. Make sure I capture that. Okay, so I'm going to work in the background a little bit and darken the sepia tone value a little more. So I grab some romber dark, a little bit of white, and just a bit of raw sienna. And we'll just make a nice color for that. This isn't going to necessarily be the final color, but just a color that I can use to really make that background more interesting than what it is. Kind of an off-white color you'd expect for a carpet. And then something also as a counterpoint to the coloring of the dog right now. the dog pop out a little bit more. And it'll take some more shading here and there and everywhere to really establish this. But we gotta start somewhere. get kind of a darker tone that I can then mix into the shadow for I'll do that right now. I'll make 
make sure I don't cover over too much of the, the dog's uh, shirt or whatever. I'll just kind of mix into that, blend it a little bit. I'm using a a little bit of glaze, uh, translucent effects here with a clear medium to um, just kind of give the painting a little more luminosity and depth. But I am doing some opaque colors. Just uh, want to use as much as I need to. There we go. I'll just kind of spread this color out and blend it and use brush strokes going in the opposite direction. And we let that dry and, and then uh, see what else we want to do with some other layers. And I think this is where we're going to stop recording for today. But just showing you how to get the initial layers on a portrait like this. And I'll be working more in future videos, um, showing you the process I'll be taking uh, to get this painting from where it's at to where it should be. Um, so I hope you join me for that. And if you found this video um, helpful in any way, um, be sure to subscribe to my blog at mattfilio.com. And you can also subscribe to more art updates here at YouTube. So. Uh, thank you so much for watching today and God bless.